The state governments are entrusted with the responsibilities of formulating social policies and social welfare policies, promoting social legislation, laying down state priorities, encouraging social welfare organizations in their respective states, evaluating programs to achieve social justice and empowerment of vulnerable and weaker sections of the society in the state to achieve the goal of social welfare. The tasks of transforming social policies into welfare programs and activities rest with the Ministry of Social Welfare of state governments. In order to carry out these responsibilities, the state governments have Department of Social Welfare with well-defined organizational and administrative setup. This lesson is about the organizational setup and functioning of the social welfare departments at the state level. The main objectives of this lesson are, on completion of this lesson, you would be able to understand the organizational setup of social welfare department at state level. Know about the functioning of social welfare departments at state level. The Indian Constitution. The year 1950 marked a new phase in the role of state in social welfare. Indian constitution came into force and the planning commission was established in this year. The directive principles of state policy emphasized the achievement of social, economic and political justice. This was further elaborated in the articles of constitution. Article 38 directs the state to secure and protect a social order which stands for the welfare of the people. Various articles of the constitution deal with specific activities to be undertaken by the state in this direction. Some of the major areas of state activity to achieve the welfare of the people are securing adequate means of livelihood to all citizens, the protection of the strength and health of workers and avoiding circumstances which force citizens to vocations unsuited to their age or strength. Protection of childhood and youth against exploitation or moral and material abandonment to secure the right to work, education and public assistance in case of unemployed, old age and sickness. In accordance to the spirit of our constitution, a large number of welfare programs have been included in five-year plans. These programs have taken shape by stages in the course of the plans. The field of welfare services became more organized in the later years with the creation of an independent ministry for social welfare and establishment of a department of social welfare at the state level. In the seventh schedule of the constitution, Social welfare subjects are scattered between the center and the state. Some subjects are under the responsibility of both. For example, those under the central lists are professional, vocational and technical training, coordination of higher education. Those under the state list are prisons, reformatories, borstel schools, beggary, relief of the disabled. Some under the concurrent list are economic and social planning, social security, charities, public trusts, marriage, divorce, adoption, vagrancy, nomadic tribes, migrants, displaced persons, lunacy. Besides the execution of social welfare projects, schemes and programs sponsored and financed wholly or partly by the central government, the state government administrations formulate and implement various kinds of welfare service programs on their own in their respective jurisdictions for the benefit of the socially and economically weaker sections of the society. 
namely children, women, scheduled castes, backward classes, disabled and handicapped, aged, unemployed, needy, destitute, etc. through both the institutional as well as non-institutional services. The institutional services are provided in the form of education, health, vocational training, hostels, care homes, etc. while the non-institutional services comprise financial assistance to meet the needs of the beneficiaries, for example, pensions to the aged, unemployment allowance to the unemployed, children allowances, etc. The state government's administrations carry out their welfare obligations and programs mainly through their departments of social welfare and voluntary organizations. Most of the states have established the departments concerned with welfare activities under one nomenclature or the other in conjunction with other departments. For example, Andhra Pradesh, Arunachal Pradesh have named as departments of social welfare. Bihar and Himachal Pradesh have named them as department of welfare and so on. These differences in designations can be attributed to the variations of local culture, needs and circumstances and so on. Further, it is not only the department of social welfare as such which deals more or less with the welfare services. There are other departments also involved in the implementation of social welfare programs. Allocation of subjects. A perusal of the subjects falling within its jurisdiction would reveal that they fall short of some subjects which could be easily assigned to it in view of their closeness to the realm of social welfare. Several subjects or significant parts of these subjects, in fact administered by other ministers, could perhaps be administered by the Ministry of Social Welfare, as for instance, social education, adult education and youth welfare activities. Ministry of Education and Culture, Welfare of Labour, Ministry of Labour, Legal Aid to the Poor, under Department of Legal Affairs, Ministry of Law, Justice and Company Affairs, the allocation of subjects to the Ministry of Social Welfare has thus been determined more or less on the basis of the deliberations of policy makers and administrators as to which ministry would be in a better position to discharge a particular function. The list of subjects allotted to the Ministry of Welfare pertaining to every conceivable aspect of social welfare is number 1. Social welfare planning, project formulation, research, evaluation, statistics and training. 2. Scheduled castes, scheduled tribes, denotified nomadic and semi-nomadic tribes and other backward classes including scholarships to students belonging to such castes, tribes and classes. 3. Appointment, resignation etc. of special officer for the scheduled castes, scheduled tribes etc. and reports of the special officer. Number 4. Development of Scheduled Castes and Scheduled Tribes Number 5. Reports of the Commission to investigate into the conditions of backward classes Number 6. Subclass A. Scheduled Areas Subclass B. Matters relating to autonomous districts of Assam excluding roads and bridge works and ferries thereon And Subclass C. Regulations framed by the governors of states for scheduled areas and for tribal areas specified in part A of the sixth schedule to the constitution. Number 7 subclass A. Commission to report on the administration of scheduled areas and the welfare of the scheduled tribes and issue of directions regarding the drawing up and execution of schemes essential for the welfare of the scheduled tribes in any state. The list of welfare activities falling within the purview of the Ministry of Welfare, though impressive, 
is by no means exhaustive as there are some welfare programs which are the responsibility of some other departments or ministries. For example, health care and family welfare programs are administered by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Youth welfare programs were managed by the Department of Youth Affairs and Sports and Departments of Women and Child Development of Ministry of Human Resource Development respectively. Those for labor welfare are the concern of the Ministry of Labor and those for ex-servicemen are the responsibility of the Ministry of Defense. This is obviously inevitable as it is not possible to bring every welfare activity undertaken and directed to meet the various needs of individuals and groups of individuals under the umbrella of Ministry of Welfare and the different ministries have to be entrusted with the management of such activities as constitute their areas of specialization. Administrative Organization The Ministry of Social Welfare at state level is headed by a cabinet minister who is assisted by minister of state or deputy minister. The department has now broad divisions. One is headed by the secretary welfare and the other one headed by the secretary women and child welfare. The secretary welfare is assisted by an additional secretary. The department of welfare has seven wings catering to various aspects of welfare. Of these, five wings are headed by a joint secretary and others are under the charge of the financial advisor and a director. The broad divisions of these wings are 1. The finance wing, 2. Handicapped welfare wing, 3. Minorities wing, 4. Scheduled caste development wing, 5. Social defense and child welfare wing, 6. Tribal Development Wing and 7. Walk Wing. The Ministry has a consultative committee of the members of parliament which in general reviews the matters relating to the ministry and advises the ministry on matters relating to general welfare as well as that of the sectoral groups. Activities of the department. The Social Welfare Department has been allocated multitude of subjects and accordingly undertakes multifarious and multidimensional functions which confine to the welfare of various sections of the society. These functions are 1. To look after the welfare of various sections of society. 2. Policy, planning and coordination of welfare programs. 3. Operation of central and centrally sponsored schemes. 4. Guidance and direction to the state. 5. Association with planning commission. 6. Convening of conferences of state ministers, secretaries of social welfare. 7. Constitutions of commissions, committees, study teams. 8. Assistance to voluntary organizations. 9. Information and mass education activities. 10. Publications 11. Research Evaluation and Documentation 12. Operation of Bilateral Agreements 13. Participation in International Conferences, Seminars and Workshops and so on The activities of the Social Welfare Department as mentioned above do not represent exhaustively its spectrum of engagements in its various fields of welfare. These have increased over the years with the ministry enlarging its area and scope of operation by including more and more sectors of society requiring help and support for their well-being. The jurisdiction of the ministry is bound to extend and its activities to expand in future due to the increase in the strength of its clientele in the wake of population explosion poverty showing no signs of abatement, increase in incidence of crimes in general and atrocities on weaker sections of society, 
women and scheduled castes and scheduled tribes in particular spurt in the number of victims of terrorists and militants and resultant phenomenon of immigration between different parts of the country and etc besides the execution of social welfare projects schemes and programs sponsored and financed wholly or partially by the central government the state governments and union territory administrations formulate and implement various kinds of welfare service programs on their own in their respective jurisdictions for the benefit of the socially and economically weaker sections of the society scheduled castes backward classes disabled and handicapped aged unemployed needy destitute etc through both the institutional as well as non institutional services the institutional services are provided in the form of education health vocational training hostels care homes etc while the non institutional services comprise financial assistance to meet the need of the beneficiaries for example pensions to the aged unemployment allowance to the unemployed children allowance etc in addition the government of andhra pradesh social welfare department directly looking after the social welfare activities of scheduled castes and other weaker sections the government have also adopted another method of creating registered societies and run educational institutions and hostels under its management which are popularly known as residential schools the social welfare department of the andhra pradesh government is dedicated to the integrated and overall development of scheduled castes the main objectives of the social welfare department are strive for educational advancement of scheduled castes help in the socio economic development of scheduled castes ensure welfare and protection of scheduled castes implement programs of social defense such as homes for orphan children rehabilitation of jogins district offices in andhra pradesh the implementation of all social welfare schemes is under the supervision of district collectors in the districts with the assistance of the deputy director district social welfare officer and assistant accounts officer in addition there are assistant social welfare officers who are assisting the deputy directors in the executive functions at the field level the deputy directors social welfare is also assisted by a deputy tahsildar revenue inspector and ministerial staff in land acquisition work for allotment of house sites to weaker sections summary the state governments also have department of social welfare under different nomenclatures the social welfare departments in the various states are organized into different divisions to cater to the development and welfare needs of particular sections of the society after independence social welfare programs were undertaken in a more organized pattern and has its base in the indian constitution social welfare department was established to coordinate the social welfare programs of the state social welfare advisory board was also established in all states and union territories to coordinate the voluntary efforts in the nation 